Every other year, the best women snipers gather for the Women's World Championship. In 2010, that was St. Petersburg, Florida in November, and the temperature was a balmy 80 degrees. Of course, uh, the sun was attractive because <laughs> we have like a really bad weather in Norway on this time of the year. No matter what the regatta, there are some things that just don't change about racing a snipe. I'm going for the mirror effect. I think sanding the board is more psychologically important uh, because we went out the first day and we had pretty good speed and we had a horrible looking board. So I think when your boat looks nice, just mentally you go fast. Knowing what's important in a snipe is a lot easier because all the competitors share information. That's a snipe tradition. Entering into an event where there's people that are willing to just share info, is, uh, it's nice and relaxing and makes you feel welcome. Once the boats clear the harbor and hit the starting line, Everyone is focused on how to get around the course the fastest. What I heard was a quote from Earl Elms. And Earl would say, hey, I can tell you everything I know and you're still not going to beat me. <laughs> the key is to, to be on an even playing field and have it be the competitor that wins. We want to win on our own merits, right? No matter how good a skipper you are, you can't win a regatta without good teamwork between the skipper and crew. I thought when we started that maybe we would, since we've known each other so, for so long and so well, that maybe it would be a little bit difficult because you get really close to each other. When you've sailed with somebody for a long time, you really do have the right feel for, for how the other sails. In a snipe, it's not just the teamwork that matters. You have to put the time in the boat to know how to make it go fast in all kinds of conditions. You have to be fast. Uh, there's, a, there's a top group in this class that is, puts in a lot of time and works really hard on their boat speed. And there's a level of boat speed in the top of the fleet that you have to have. On top of that, you have to be smart and you have to sail well. And I think there's also a little bit of luck. Luck does play a role when the top sailors are so evenly matched. Porque es un barco muy técnico, aprende mucho y requiere una preparación física y te ayuda a estar sano en la vida. Yo pienso que el snipe es como un barco que es muy completo y lo puedes adaptar mucho a tu circunstancia, a tu peso y seas mujer, seas hombre, es como muy adaptable, eso me parece que es una ventaja. Es una buena clase para navegar, si lo, si lo recomendaría, dependiendo de la edad. Si eres más joven, tú puedes navegar en, SNA, ahí, en Optimist o en Cadete o en otras clases de iniciación, pero a cierta edad tú puedes navegar en Snipe porque es muy fácil aprender y encima te enseña muchas cosas para futuras clases más complicadas. We've seen many snipers who've gone on to championships in other classes. The high level of competition at Sniper Goddess makes good tactics and changing gears vital to winning. Nivoa i Sniper er høyt og det er utfordrende. For å være på toppen så må du jobbe hardt og ligge der. At the Women's Worlds, the racing was tight, and it meant that consistency over the nine races was key. A few races out of the top five, and you were off the podium. Our goal was like five, and now we are fighting for the first, and we are really happy. <laughs> yes. Going into the last race, only three points separated the top three boats. It doesn't get a lot more competitive than that. Yeah, I think, you know, we knew we had a lot of competition here, and. You know, a lot of people who sail with snipe a lot, and uh, but it's great practice for us, and uh, you know, very tactical game, and uh, that's what we're here for, and uh, we're having a great time. Taking first in the last race gave Anna and Molly the victory. One more reason that Anna is Rolex Woman Sailor of the Year. It's also an example of the snipe attracting the very best sailors.